Hey everyone, welcome to All Techies. I'm Pankesh Rai, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how you can add the networking library Kate Offline to your Android app built with Jetpack Compose. So, first, switch to Griddle and add the dependencies for the Kate Offline. Also, do remember to add the ID for the Kotlin X serialization along with the class path. And now we are good to go. So let me first switch to the Kato client object. Inside this, I'm going to create the HTTP object, which will be responsible for the network call, the get or the post calls. So for that, let me first create the JSON object equals to JSON, where I'm going to define the properties as encode defaults to true, which is false by default, and the most important property ignore unknown keys to true. Encode defaults to true is quite important because in case you have specified some default values to your data class, then those will not be encoded if this is false. Ignore unknown keys is really an important property because in case server is sending some key which you haven't specified in your module class, then that will make your app to crash as it will try to map all the keys with Ignore unknown keys. What it does is that if the key is found in your model class, it just mapped to it. Otherwise, it just ignored those keys. Now let's create our HTTP client object. So we have HTTP client. And now inside this HTTP client, we are going to install the features. So unlike the builder pattern where we have dot operator, here we have something called as install method. Inside install method, we specify what features do we want. So here I'm saying I need JSON feature for this HTTP client object where I'll specify the serializer as Kotlin X serializer. To this serializer, I can pass on the JSON object too. Along with the JSON feature, we can also install a few others like the logging feature where we have logger, then we can have, let's say, object colon logger. Then in this log method, we can specify our log.i, where I could say network comma message. We can also specify the log level so we could say log level as either all body headers info or none so for now i'm saying this as log level dot all apart from this let's also have the http timeout. Here we'll say about the socket timeout in millis, say 15 seconds. Then request timeout millis, 15 seconds. And connect timeout millis again to say 15 seconds. With these three, we are actually good to go. The only thing which I'm missing out here is the default request. With this, our HTTP client will be ready for the get or the post request. In the default request, we specify the content type that we are expecting and even sending. So we could say content type. Then inside this, we could say content type dot application dot JSON. Same is true for the accept also because we need JSON format. So application dot JSON. That's it. We are good to go now. So let me switch to the user repo. Inside user repo, let's create a function get user details. We will say ktor client dot http client dot get 
our model and the URL. Now, one thing to remember here is that get is a suspending function, which means that it has to be called either through the suspending function or from the code in builder. So let's make this function as a suspending function. Apart from this, we also need to return the result from this function to our view model. So for that, let's make this as a return user. However, there's one important thing to note. This HTTP client should get closed also as soon as the operation is done. So rather than just calling HTTP client.get, what's the best option here is to call dot use. And inside this, we could say it dot get with a URL. Now, in case of post, so think of a case like we have same URL for the post also, just for an assumption then we'll use post instead of get but post along with the url also need body so for that we could specify body like this where we could specify object or say even the map like a to one however few apis also need authorization so we have headers and inside headers we could append the key and the value pair. So in case of authorization headers, you can specify it inside the headers where key will be the authorization and value could be your token. Okay, now let me remove this. So we have our get user details. Now let me call this from the view model. Let's switch to our user view model we'll create user details flow as mutable state flow with a return type of user and default value as null view model scope dot launch we could say user repo dot get user details but while calling get user details it may also raise exception so how do we handle those things for that we have something called as run catching if you see the implementation of this then it just enclose this in the try and catch block so we'll put our user repo dot get user details inside run catching then on success we'll assign this to the user details flow dot value is equals to it where it is the instance of user and in case of failure i just want this to remain null but in case of requirement you can specify this with the success and the failure response so that you could handle both of them appropriately on the ui so v model is ready now let's switch back to our main activity where we'll create the composable. So let's create a composable as user details, which will have a default parameter of user view model equals to view model. Here, one important thing is how do we are going to observe the response from this user view model to the composable. So for that, we need a sort of observer. So let me do one thing. We'll create user, then view model dot user details flow, and then collect as state. The moment we call this as collect as state, then you can think as if we have set an observer on the user details flow. As soon as the value of the user details flow changes, this composable will get recomposed and then we see the updated content on the ui then instead of accessing the value using dot value operator let's access the value directly using the user object 
by just replacing equal to with the by keyword. Now let me do one thing. If this is null, then we'll have a composable as please wait. In case it's having some value, then we can take appropriate action. Finally, let's call this from the composable. So that's it. With this little steps, we have added networking capability to our Android app built with Jetpack Compose. Also, not to forget, in the manifest, do remember to add user's permission as internet. If you have liked this video, then please do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to get the latest videos on the Android, Kotlin and Firebase topics. Thank you and stay tuned.